but like one of the biggest things, and I know you talk pretty extensively about this is blood sugar. And, and I know that this is not sexy at all to anyone. Um, and I get like, I get it, but as you get older ladies, trust me, <laughs> it really, it becomes super sexy. But you know, one of the things that a lot of us don't realize is how the menstrual cycle and those sex hormones influence blood sugar and insulin. And so what do you think about that first half of the cycle I was talking about, the building of estrogen, that higher estrogen in the follicular phase correlates with increased insulin sensitivity. So basically it means that insulin works better or we need less of it to control blood sugar in that first half of our cycle. And then around ovulation, insulin sensitivity starts to decrease um, because of that drop in estrogen post ovulation and then progesterone rises. And then insulin is actually higher generally in the luteal phase and higher progesterone seems to affect insulin sensitivity a bit negatively, unfortunately. And so it causes this a bit of an increase in insulin resistance, um, you know, during the phase of the cycle, this phase of the cycle. And, you know, what this really means is that we're just more prone to blood sugar swings, the hyperglycemia to hypoglycemia, and we're more sensitive to those drops in blood sugar in that second half of the cycle. And this, of course, creates mood symptoms. It creates changes in our weight, which are some of the biggest concerns that I hear from clients. Women in every single survey I do, whether it's on Instagram or to my community via a mailing list, they say their mood symptoms are the biggest concerns. And I, you know, I constantly think about the incongruence of our biology with this modern world. It's not great. And as you said, right, moving to the farm <laughs> really helped. And it does, moving away from all of these external stressors. Uh, but you know, like coming back to that, I just want to again remind everyone, your body is not rebelling against you, right? It's not that it doesn't want you to feel good in your cute swimsuit or fit into your jeans or whatever. It's that you're primed for making babies and insulin plays a really vital role in every stage of that process. And, you know, when you think about the first half of your cycle, your body is directing all this energy towards building up that uterine lining and the maturing follicle, and it comes from glucose. <laughs> and so that insulin sensitivity helps sort of direct that glucose to those really energy intensive activities that are happening in your body. And then in that second half of your cycle, it supports energy storage in the adipose tissue because you might be potentially pregnant and you need that energy storage for a potential pregnancy. Um, and our bodies, you know, we've, re we've evolved over like hundreds of thousands of years and they're really, really smart. And I feel like we just constantly are working against them or working our, against our biology. And so just like I said, the blood sugar piece, I think is so, so crucial. Um, because when we can actually start to get that under control, that changes so many things. That's the key. That's the key. And the thing that women, I don't talk about this much online because it's, a lot of biochemistry, but we're always talking about insulin sensitivity and optimizing the insulin receptors. But what nobody's talking about is that we have these other independent pathways that are insulin independent, the AMPK, the CERT one that lead into PGC1 alpha, and those are stimulated by exercise. Those are stimulated by caloric restriction. Those are stimulated by GLP-1s. It's like there's this whole other world of getting glucose into the cell appropriately, like creating, like I think of, you know, muscle specifically, but muscle cells, but cells in general, they are a glucose sink if we do it right. So don't eat so much that the body can't handle it. And then what you do eat needs to go in efficiently. And it can't just be about doing low carb. Everybody says, oh, I just, I was you know, I've got blood sugar issues. I'm going to go low carb. I'm like, okay, that inherently can bring about its own issues over time. But that said, that's just like, to me, one third of the equation of getting glucose into the cell and we need exercise. Exercise is our most potent tool to get glucose into the cell from insulin independent means and exercise and being well muscled is our absolute best tool to making sure that our hormones are balanced and having muscle and good physical fitness going into menopause because as our estrogen drops, I just did a podcast about this, as our estrogen drops, we are going to go into metabolic dysfunction, whether we like it or not. And so we have to be armed with good physical fitness and muscle going into that. That's why we have to train for menopause. It's not negotiable because women are going into menopause completely unprepared and they're like, I don't know what to do. And then they're being given menopause cream or whatever, or a patch. And I'm like, dude, like they're missing the whole freaking point. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy to me. And I, I realized I just rattled off a lot, but this is, 
There's so many inherent reasons why we have, I don't care how people exercise. I don't care what they like to do. It doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. I think it's great as long as you're moving. Do definitely pay attention to muscle though, because it's got its own set of unique, wonderful assets that we need. Think of this like a portfolio. Like you want your portfolio as rich as possible as you walk into retirement, right? So it's the same with our health. Like if you're not really dialed in by 35, 40, you've got a lot of work to do. And so this is where your expertise has been really valuable for me and where I think people need to pay attention, especially younger women who think, oh, it's no big deal. It's a big freaking deal. It really is. It's such a big deal. It's such a big deal for the younger women for fertility. You know, we were talking about this before oh, we yeah. started recording the fact that, right, like you just kind of think, okay, well, I'm just going to go on the pill and then I'm going to come off of it in 15 years and I'm going to get pregnant because that's what my doctor told me. But the more research that comes out now about the effects of the pill and, and what it does to, you know, every aspect of our health, um, and again, there are lots of people who take the pill without incident. So I get that there is that, but there are a lot of us who don't, I am one of those people. That is why I actually do the work that I do. And, you know, and I think that there's, that is such a flawed way to approach our bodies and our fertility and our health. And I, I just can't believe that there's just no connection, right? There has to be some connection to our soaring rates of infertility and, being on these synthetic hormones that have not only an impact on our ovarian function, um, obviously it's stopping ovulation, it's its mechanism of action, but had the, the pill has so many other effects. I mean, we now there's now research to show that, that we it has an impact on you know our gut, our liver, our gallbladder, our thyroid, our adrenals, and our stress response, our nutrient stores. So there's so much from gut microbiome composition um, you know, to intestinal permeability, uh, to our, you know, gallbladder function and bile production. It's kind of insane to think about it. And, and the amount of young women I know who've had their gallbladder taken out and it was because they were on the birth control pill is astounding. Yes. And so I think, right, we have to really consider this stuff uh, before we make a decision to just be on this medication that is not without side effects for most people. Um, you know, for extended periods of time. It just wasn't designed to do this. It wasn't designed for us to be on it for these long periods of time. And if you don't have your gallbladder working you are, and your bile production happening, you don't absorb your fat-soluble vitamins, which are essentially acting as hormones. And you are, I mean, you don't get your A, your E, your D. It doesn't it doesn't get in. So it's just a, it's a disaster. See, I would see these it's women in my practice and they were hitting middle age and it was hitting them like a train, you know, like yes. a complete train wreck. And I was like, oh geez, like I wish somebody would have done intervention 20 years ago. Cause this is going to be a tough one. 